Sveiki miliai, Žalgiris TV žiūrovai. Suimis kaip ir kiekvieną savaitę laida dėmesys Eurolygai. Išvykose dar nenugalėtas Kauno Žalgiris keliauja į Graikijos sosnę Atenus, kur susidik su vietos Atenų Panatinaikos ekipa. Be ne daugiausiai apie šį klubą Žalgirį gali papasakoti Graikas Janas Vojukas, rungtyniavęs Panatinaikos ir su šiuo klubu iškovojęs Eurolygos čempionų titulą. Pasiklausykime, ką turi pasakyti Janas. Kalbinome Kauno Žalgirio komandos žaidėje Jana Vojuka. Hello, Jan. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, you? Good. First question, of course, about the last games you played here in Lithuania. I've noticed one thing. You are like the first water guy. You usually score from 8 to 10 points. What about it? Yeah, it's been like that the last couple of games, but, you know, I've just been getting off to a good start and my teammates are finding me and I'm, you know, making some baskets, but... I have to be hard on myself to try and stay in the whole game. You know, like this, okay, it's not possible, but to be productive at least in one way or another the whole game. Yeah. Last week, the team achieved the victory in Kedaini against Nevesi's team. Was it hard to compete in Kedaini after the game in Euroleague tournament? I mean, it's difficult because you know you played Friday against Barcelona and played Sunday against Nevesi, so it was difficult. Obviously, just just being less than 48 hours. But you know, I think we in the second half at least we showed you know we were more serious and we were able to get the win. Okay, it would be a sin not to talk to you in this show about the upcoming game in Athens because you played in Athens, Panathinaikos. You are from Greece. Will it be more than a regular season game for you? Definitely, it'll be a, you know a special game because you know, I have you know, some great memories from Panathinaikos, and uh, obviously Athens is my hometown. You know, I'll see my parents, my family, you know, my friends. I'll see the, my old friends from Panathinaikos, all the, you know, everyone there. So I'm excited to to go back, and you know, it's a great excuse to go to Greece. You know, to I miss you know I've been back for about two months plus, so it's nice to go back. Uh, let's go back to the pass even further. You played both for Olympiakos and Panathinaikos. What's the situation when a guy like you plays in both teams in Greece? It, was it considered to be like a offense or something? Just explain the situation. Uh, it's probably, you know, similar to when you play on the uh, Jalgiris and the uh, Legvos you yeah. know, it's, uh, it's difficult to go from one team to another. Uh, my case was a little different though because uh, even though I signed a three-year deal right out of college with Olympiakos, I only stayed for one year. Uh, the other two years I played on loan to other Division One teams, uh, and uh, the year I was with Olympiakos, I didn't play so much, so it was not such a big deal, you know, that I went to, uh, like for example, like Spanolis or Perperoglu, you know, they the big cases, yeah, the big cases, and you know, for example, Perperoglu play this uh, this year when he plays at Panathinaikos, they'll still remember, you know, him, and they will obviously, you know, did the fans make like a special shoutings for the for him? Yeah, probably something I can't repeat on camera, but uh, yeah, some special uh, chanting, let's say, yes. Yeah. Uh, you played in Athens during the victorious 2010-2011 Euroleague season. Uh, what emotions, memories are still left in you after that uh, victorious season? I think I was a little spoiled because my first season with Panathinaikos, we were able to win the Euroleague and the Greek Championship, <laughs> uh, so I was very lucky to be on that team. Um, you know, obviously, it's it's you know some memories which I will uh, remember and cherish for the rest of my career and life, and it's really hard to you know repeat something like this. But uh, it's something which always will have a special place in my heart, and I always uh, look back uh, with you know some uh, kind of a nostalgia. Yeah. Uh, do you still exchange memories about the title with Sharunas Iskavchus? Uh, we have not about the title, uh, but uh, we've talked, you know, about Panathinaikos in general. And uh, I know that he really, you know, he was really lucky. He played Panathinaikos, played in Maccabi, played Barcelona, so he's played in some great teams. And uh, you know, I'm sure he, he has fond memories everywhere. And uh, I'm sure Panathinaikos, because you know his wife uh, Anna is Greek, so he, he, I'm sure he 
feels closer to Greece in those countries. Yeah. Uh, this season Panathinaikos started EuroLeague campaign with one victory and three losses. Uh, of course, uh, like you from Greece, you follow the news in Greece. Is it considered to be the crisis of the team or only the bad start of the Panathinaikos? Well, they have a pretty new team this year with new a new coach and some new additions. Uh, the expectations were high, so I'm sure people are not happy right now that they're one and three. Uh, they've been struggling on the road. Uh, they win at home uh, pretty convincingly, so it's going to be a difficult game. I think it's a very uh, important game for both teams, um, especially Panathinaikos, because uh, if they were to drop to one and four after losing at home, it'd be the, you know something which they would uh, have a bigger problem. Yeah. Like big names like Dimitris Demantidis, Radulica, Kalatas, Fotis and other famous players in Europe. Uh, what does the team in your opinion needs to improve or lack uh, in this kind of period of time of season? I think just, you know, they need more time to gel as a team, you know, just like uh, we have some uh, times during the game where because we're new players, we, you know, maybe we'll, uh, you know, we're not in sync. I think it's the same for them. I think as the season goes on, they started the season actually really well. They beat Olympiakos twice. So, you know, they're having, uh, every team has ups and downs, but hopefully, you know, we'll be able to continue their downs on Friday and, you know, they won't try and find a good game against us. But uh, I think it's just a matter of time until they, you know, become, uh, they gel as a team and they, you know, become the team that they are. What is it like to play on the court with the guys like Diamantidis, Kalatis? You know, I mean, they... They're floor leaders, you know, especially, you know, Dimadidis, uh, you know, he's he's a great, uh, I mean, both of them are great passers, they both look to, they look to, you know, help the team, it's, uh, it's something that they're unselfish, they look to uh, exploit, you know, matchups, or if someone is hot, you know, they'll try and get him the ball, uh, in general, they, they try, they usually make the right play, you know, and they, they're like, they're like coaches on the floor, I guess. Yeah. So basically, you know both teams, Jalgiris and Panathinaikos. What could be Jalgiris' strengths in a game in Athens? Um, something, you know, I have a couple of things I've thought about, but probably I wouldn't like to, you know, talk about it yet. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to, you know, to talk about it. But, uh, you know, I think we have a good chance because uh, I know they're under pressure yeah. and uh, this obviously could backfire and they could, you know, play great because sometimes, you know, when. The, Greek teams usually, when their backs up against the wall, they always fight. So we'll be ready for you know a good game and a good fight. So Jan, I wish you a good game and Afkaristopoli. Parakalo, thank you. Thank you. Tai buvo tiek šioje laidoje. Tikėkime mes, kad išvykose dar nenugalėtas Kauno Žalgiris pasiek strečiąją pergalę ir Graikijoje. Daugiau mūsų naujie nurasite YouTube kanale bei Facebook, Instagram ir Twitter paskyrose. Iki draugai.